In this video, I will show you two simple but powerful tools that you can use to figure out what is happening in your program. We're going to be looking at debug messages and breakpoints. A lot of beginner programming courses might start somewhere else than I do. However, I've found that it can be more difficult to learn about variables, functions, loops, and so on, if you don't know the tools that will help you figure out what might be wrong or right in your program. In this episode, I will introduce the concepts. And then we will use the tools in just about all later episodes when we look at variables, functions, loops, conditionals, and so on. Remember that GDescript and Godot is what we'll be using as the main example in this series. But today I will also show you how what we use in Godot is almost identical to how we could do the same thing using C Sharp and Visual Code. In this episode, we will be using the files in the episode 2 folder. I've left a link in the description to where you can find the files on GitHub. You can find more information about the example projects and this course in the last episode of this series. And now let's get started. Okay, so it's very common to make mistakes that will cause bugs, as we like to call them, when we create any kind of software program. This isn't only something that happens to beginners, it happens to all of us. There will just about always be small or big things that didn't act like we expected. A very important part of programming is finding out what's wrong and why. We can of course just read through our code again and again until we find the problem. But in a lot of cases, this just makes us blind to the problem. Instead, we also use tools that can help us validate what's going on. Oh, before I forget, please remember that you can support my work on this channel through memberships here on YouTube or on Patreon. And any like, subscription to this channel or comment to this video will also make me very happy and keep motivation high. Now enough with this self-promotion, let's get back on track. The first bug finding technique most people usually start out with is using debug messages. So let's take a look at our example project here. Just by reading the code, I have an idea that the first part of the code that's run is this up here. I mean, isn't that why it says ready here? But just trusting my intuition isn't always the best thing. I want some kind of proof. So let's try to write a message for ourselves here in the line, right after the one that says func underscore ready void. In GDescript, we can do it like this. We write print underscore debug and then add an open and a close parenthesis. You don't have to think about how all this works right now, just how we can use it. You will get a deeper understanding what all of this means from the later episodes. Okay, so between the two parentheses, we can then write our message. And we have to start and end our message with quotation marks. I will just write print one here, but do try writing other things yourself. And then we hit the play icon to run the program. At first, it looks like nothing happened here. However, if we look in the Godot editor, down here in the output menu, then we can see our message was printed. Now let's try to add one or two print debugs more. And check that these are also printed in the order we expected. So now we know that those specific lines of our code are definitely being run. We actually have proof of it. 
Another thing we can use our print debox for is seeing how many times a specific line is run. For our first examples, each of our messages were just printed out once. But what if I add a new line down here after the line that says for r in range rows? If we run the program again, we can see that this message is being printed multiple times. This is then proof of our program reaching this line multiple times. When we write our code using GDescript, then the indention here is very important. So if you're having any trouble with what I did so far, please double check that the indention before each line is correct. I will cover in later episodes why this is. Now we covered how to write simple messages in GDescript. But how could this look in another language? Is it very different or is this concept easy to transfer to another language? Let's take a look at how we can do the same thing when writing C Sharp in Visual Code. Here I've made a simple little project that's somewhat similar to the GDescript code we looked at before. Please note that this isn't a C Sharp script you can use in Godot. It's just a little example made to help you see that even though GDescript and C Sharp are two completely different languages, they still have things in common. In C Sharp, we can write debug messages almost like we did in GDescript. Only here, we write debug.print and then again add our message between two parentheses. When we run the program in debug mode, our messages are then being printed to the debug console down here. Writing messages for ourselves is a debugging technique that can be used in just about any language. Writing messages like this might be too tedious. And there might also be cases where it will be difficult to remember what print messages came from where. This is then why we start using breakpoints as well. So let's go back to the script editor in Godot. If you move your mouse over here to the left of the line number for our script, you can see that a dark red dot appears. We can then click and the dot turns bright red and stays put even if we move the mouse. This is how we can add a breakpoint to the script. The breakpoint belongs to a specific line in the script, and this is important to remember. When we run the project, the execution will pause when the program reaches the beginning of a line with a breakpoint attached to it. Which line the program has paused at is visualized using this little yellow arrow here. And down here in the stack trace menu, it will say breakpoint with a red text. This also tells us that we've stopped at a breakpoint. If we want to continue the program, we can then hit the pause button up here and the program will continue on. Now try to add more breakpoints to the code. and then try to run the program and move between each breakpoint using the pause button. We can use breakpoints for the same cases that we used our print debug statements previously. However, we can also use breakpoints when we want more information about what's going on in our code. In the later episodes, when we will look closer at variables and methods, we will also look closer into all the information we can get down here when the program is paused. Again, we might ask ourselves, is breakpoints something that is unique to GDescript and Godot? Well, let's switch back to our little C-sharp project in Visual Code. 
Just like in Godot's script editor, we can add breakpoints in Visual Code. And it works the exact same way. We run the project in debug mode, and the execution is paused when a line with a breakpoint is reached. Breakpoints aren't really a part of the programming languages. They are instead a part of the software we use to write our code. We can write our code in any kind of text editor, even Notepad. However, in most cases, it's beneficial to use an IDE, an integrated development environment. An IDE will have a text editor for writing your code, but it will also have a bunch of other tools either built in or available through plugins that will make programming easier. And one of these tools is then breakpoints. When to use debug messages and when to use breakpoints is really up to you. There is no right or wrong answer here and I will suggest that you try both out a lot and form your own opinions before you start listening too closely to what others might think is better. And that will also be the mini exercise for this week. Test out what I've shown you in this video. Practice writing different debug messages. Place breakpoints all kinds of places. Are there places where you cannot write a debug message? And are there lines you cannot reach using breakpoints? Experiment all you can and even try to break something. This is how we learn. I hope you liked this video and remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell and all that if you want to see more like this in the future.